This video shows some of the diversity in form and life history of hydrozoan cnidarians, like this colony of polyps in the genus Agliophenia from a dock in Alameda Bay in Long Beach. Hydrozoans are extremely diverse in both morphology and especially in life history. The group includes species with both polyp and medusa stages, for example, species with no polyp stage, and species with no medusa stage. There's also a ton of polymorphism within hydrozoan colonies. We'll look at a few different species of hydrozoans and we'll organize them according to this recent phylogeny of the group. Note that it's missing one large group of hydrozoans, Capitata. I know they're in this top clade somewhere, but I don't know who they're sister to, so I'll just connect them with a dashed line indicating uncertainty. On this phylogeny, I'll keep track of some basic life history parameters. Does the species have a free-swimming or crawling planula larva? Does it have a polyp stage? And does it have a free-swimming medusa stage? We'll start with the species Eukylota bakeri, which you've probably seen at the beach but perhaps not noticed. Sandy beaches are not a great place for polyps since there isn't much to hang on to. Eukylota polyps occur only on the shells of living mollusks, mostly bean clams, Donax guldi. They occur in colonies which have two kinds of zoids, feeding and reproductive. These were collected from Bolsa Chica State Beach. Why don't they also use dead shells? Maybe it's because the behavior of living mollusks helps keep the hydroids in a good position for suspension feeding. It's easy to remove parts of the colony for closer viewing. Eukylota polyps have some strange behaviors. This behavior that's illustrated in this clip is pretty slow, so be patient or speed up the clip. I'm not sure if this behavior is normal. It's possible that it's an artifact of the colony being placed on a slide under bright light, but it looks pretty regular, so I don't know.
After a while in the bowl under bright light, the gonozoids released a lot of tiny medusae. The next species we'll look at is a species of Agliophenia. It might be Agliophenia struthianites, I'm not quite sure. It's in the Leptothecata, like Euchylota. It does not have a medusa stage. The polyp stage is polymorphic with at least three different varieties, feeding, reproductive, and defensive. These colonies were collected from a floating dock at the mouth of Alameda Bay in Long Beach. Carbulae are a little easier to understand if you can see them in different views. Let's start with looking at them over development. Here's a young corbula, not yet closed up into a cylinder. You can see the reproductive structures, gonozoids, in the middle. The flaps on either side of those are parasarch that's going to grow up and over and shield the gonozoids from the outside world. Here's a slightly older corbula. The gonozoids have a yellowish core and an older one. The parasarch has closed this off into a cylinder, but the parasarch is still quite transparent. And here's a slightly older one. The parasarch is now brownish yellow. I'll use my forceps to point to four or five of the individual leaves of parasarch that make up the wall of the cylinder. 
Another useful way to look at these is in cross-section. So I cut a cross-section of a corbula with a razor blade so we can see its central axis at the bottom, two leaves of parasarc on either side forming the cylinder, and inside two gonozoids. The parasarc on the outside is covered with little protrusions, which are actually defensive polyps. You can also see flow in the GVC connecting those defensive zoids to the rest of the colony. If a colony is male, it releases sperm from the gonozoids and they drift out into the water. If a colony is female, it retains eggs in the big uh, empty space within the corbula where they get fertilized by drifting sperm. Eggs develop into planulae while held in that big space in the corbula and eventually they crawl out. Here's a very young planula. It hasn't hatched yet. It's still in a fertilization envelope. Also, I damaged one end of it when I was getting it out of the corbula. We couldn't see one of the characteristic features of the hydrozoan medusa, the velum, on that of Euchylota. So let's take a quick look at Gonionemus vertens. This has a small solitary polyp, but the medusa is large and obvious. If you were to look at a Gonionemus medusa inside you, it would look something like this. This is a stained specimen in oral view, and its velum is pretty clearly visible. Finally, my favorite hydrozone of the day. This is a species of Ectoplura, possibly Crocea, which is a member of the group the Aplanulata. It has no free planula and no free medusa. Again, these are from a dock in Alamitos Bay in Long Beach. The very lively crustaceans in this clump of Ectoplora 
are caprelid amphipods, and we'll learn more about those in a few weeks. Though this looks like a single polyp, it's actually a colony itself. So the grape-like ovoid objects that are inside the ring of big tentacles, those have a greenish core. They look kind of like the gonozoids of Agliophenia, right? They are the reproductive zoids of Ectoplora. Here's a colony with lots of gonozoids. This small ectoplora branching from the large one likely got there by larval settlement. Ectoplora releases strange larvae called actinula larvae, and those settle on other ectoplora, they metamorphose, and they apparently fuse with the colony they settled on. I'm guessing that that's what's happened here.
What's in those gonozoids? All of the colonies I found were apparently male, since when I removed gonozoids and squished them under a cover slip, this is what I found inside, sperm. They're still in clusters, so I don't think the sperm are completely mature. We'll end with two groups of hydrozoans that we informally call hydrocorals. These fall into two distinct clades. These are colonies that secrete a calcium carbonate base. We have skeletons of two kinds. The first is a milliporine or fire coral. It's a member of the capitata. A species we'll see in another video, Volella, is in that group as well. Here's a milliporine hydrozoan, also known as fire coral. This was collected in Panama. The skeleton looks very smooth, but if you look at it at a higher magnification with transmitted light, you can see tiny holes where the polyps originally came out. The second group of hydrocorals are called stylastrines, and they belong in this clade called filifera. So here's a small fragment of a stylastrine. I don't know where this was collected. The large holes were occupied by feeding polyps. The tiny holes that you can see between them were occupied by defensive polyps.